Holland College is located in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. My name is Jess Cameron, the head coach of the Holland Hurricanes women's hockey team. The goals of the Holland Hurricanes uh, hockey program is to make it a reputable uh, varsity program um, with a high level of compete with other teams around Atlanta, Canada. Life on Prince Edward Island is really like a sense of community. It is very nice and friendly. You can always find a friend or someone that you know. It's super like a small town atmosphere. Academic life is good. It's challenging. I still get through with the support of my teachers and the classmates. But as long as you're organized, like it's, it's pretty easy to manage. My impression on my instructors are amazing. They care about your future goals. They're passionate to what they're teaching. They really help balance the student athlete lifestyle. I think valuable aspects of playing post-secondary hockey is pretty limitless, starting off with time management. Uh, I do believe that athletics help uh, keep students on track, knowing when assignments have to be done and homework has to be done before they get to the rink is actually a really helpful uh, piece in the student athlete's uh, experience. To be able to continue playing high level hockey is really important for me. I've been playing hockey since I was a little girl and being able to continue to play while going to school means a lot. Another positive aspect of playing a sport at the post-secondary level is uh, having an immediate support group. 20 odd teammates and coaches uh, is just an extra helping hand in the college process. The best part of being a student athlete is probably like you see your teammates all the time and then you see them at school and at the gym and it's just like you really have a sense of belonging. Being able to take my athletic skills and my academic skills and put them together. No matter where you go around campus and there's always people like telling you like oh you had a good game or something like that so it's really a positive environment. One of the benefits of being an athlete at Holland College is the athletics department support, tons of media coverage, athletes of the week, uh, walking around campus. It's just a really positive environment with athletes from all sports interacting, smiling, talking about their performances over the weekend. My impressions on my coaches this year are amazing. They give us a lot of like really good feedback. It's nice having three female coaches. They've all played high level hockey so they know like how to balance like your schoolwork and with your practice time and game time and they're always there at the gym to like cheer us on and stuff so it's really supportive. As a coach uh, while I'm recruiting I'm definitely looking for a good balance in you know, speed, skill and hockey IQ. They need to be ready to compete every day and have the commitment level to play at a collegiate level. We're looking for players that are well-rounded individuals um, we look for good, strong characters in our locker room. They also have to be able to balance a uh, collegiate academic schedule um, with their athletic experience. Atlanta, Canada definitely has a high level of women's hockey. The competition that we play against is very talented girls. Our ages kind of vary from younger athletes to a little bit older athletes, but everybody's really competitive. If someone was interested in enrolling at Holland College, I would encourage them to head over to hollandcollege.com, check out which programs they may be interested in, uh, fill out a player profile to alert me of if you're interested in hockey, and feel free to reach out with any questions about the application process or about the hockey program.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center for this first game of the Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association Championship between the Acadia University Axe Women and the host Holland College Hurricanes. My name is Jordi Carraher, and I'll be doing play-by-play -play for the balance of the weekend here. And the teams are just hitting the ice now. And before we actually drop the puck, we're going to announce... And it looks like we just had to resolve an issue with the game sheet on the Acadia side here. Now we're going to public address announcer. And our first recognized all-star of the evening for the Acadia Axe women is Sarah Jackson who will be tonight's backup, meaning that Brittany Longley will be starting a net for Acadia. And Jackson put together a strong season, finishing with a record of 3-0, goals against average of 1.00. Brooke Switzer up front had a strong season for the Axe women as well, the Vineland Ontario product in eight games, three goals, three assists. And the captain of the Axe women here, Melissa Atkinson, also recognized as a first-team All-Star League leader in scoring this year. Seven goals, four assists for 11 points in eight games. And beginning the second-team honors for the Axe women would be Lily Ryan. She had a strong season for Acadia as well, a goal and five assists in six contests. And on the back end, Amelia Cromwell from Darlings Island, New Brunswick. She makes second team All-Star here as well. Two assists in eight games. Strong presence on the back end. Now here are the 2020 NCHA League All-Stars from the Holland Hurricanes. NCHA first team All-Star number 14, JC McMillan. And Surrey PEI product, JC McMillan joins the ACHA first team All Stars this year. Five goals, two assists in eight games. And from Middle Sackville, Nova Scotia, Claire Rankin also joins the first team All Stars. Five goals, three assists in eight games. And tonight's starting goaltender for the Hurricanes, Lindsay Menard. She's named to the second team ACHA All-Stars. Yarmouth, Nova Scotia product, Menard. ACHA second team All-Star, number six, Paige Dean. And Paige Dean rounds out, excuse me, the uh, Hurricanes All-Stars this year, Wilmot Valley PEI product. And there you have it, all of 
the All-Stars for both the Hurricanes and Ox women announce. And we are just about set for puck drop here at the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center in Montague PEI. Once again, it'll be the Acadia University Axe Women. You'll see them in blue with the red numbers with white trim. And they're going up against the host Holland College Hurricanes in the white with maroon sleeves. And they'll be going left to right for this first period. Once again, tonight's starting goaltenders for the Hurricanes, we have Lindsay Menard, product of Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Six games this season, a win and three losses, goals against average of 283. And for the Axe women, they're going with Brittany Longley in this one. Four games played, two wins and a loss, goals against a 250. This should prove to be an exciting matchup, fairly even throughout the season. Acadia with two wins and two draws. And we are underway. And the Axe women chip it into the zone here early. And that's Can back for the puck. She chips it up to Rankin. Good puck battle down here in the corner. That's Atkinson down there for Ryan, and she tries to whip it around. Can't quite get it there, and here come the Hurricanes on a three-on-one break here. There's Rankin with the draw pass, tried to find McMillan. Just a little bit off, and the Axe women get it out of the zone. Emma Dixon carrying the puck. First change of the game, and Dixon trips over the blue line, it appears. And the Axe women take it into the zone. That was Pike bringing it in. And the Axe women try to center it once again. That's Casibo trying to get it in, but the Hurricanes will gain possession and get it out. And the Axe women chip it back in. Again, that's Casibo firing it on net, and Menard does the smart thing, and she will cover it up here for the faceoff. We're early in this contest, just 56 seconds into this one. For those who may not be familiar with the ACHA, three 15 minute periods and will flood after the second period of each contest. Face off to the right of Lindsay Menard here.
And as a reminder, for all tournament information and updates, follow us on Twitter at AtlanticHKY or visit AtlanticCollegiateHockey.ca. And looks like we're trying to sort out a potential change or we'll see if there's a potential game sheet issue here. Referee signaling to the corner. Trying to figure out what's going on here. And it looks like we're just about set to go. And the Axe Women win the draw. That's Casibo firing it on net. And a bit of a scramble there. Nice save by Menard. And a puck battle in the corner there. Pike getting tangled up there with Deshane. And the Hurricanes will bring it out here. And that is number 11. That was McDougal bringing it in for the Hurricanes. And they keep it in the zone. But the Axe Women looks like they got it out. And... Oh, just about caught for, sort of caught in between a change there were the Hurricanes, but the Axe Women just dump it in. And the lead pass missed its target, but the Hurricanes will still bring it in. That was Harrison bring it in, and nice early stop there from Longley getting her into the game. And cross ice pass. Eventually, no, it doesn't find its target as Rankin will bring it back in for the Hurricanes. Rankin with the shot, that's blocked. And Rankin gets it back here. She'll feed it back to Dixon at the point. Dixon with the slap shot, that goes off the glove. Bouncing around in front there. White just about had a chance, but the Axe Women will get it out of the zone. And Dixon has the puck here, she's gonna send it. Oh, and it looks like we're gonna get a call for too many players on the ice here for the Axe Women. And that'll send the Hurricanes to the first power play of the game. 12.46 left in this first period, still no score. And the Axe Women head coach, Curtis Weatherby here, he thought that might have been a little bit of a tight change. But nevertheless, it was called. And it appears that it will be Jess McIntyre serving it for the Axe Women. At any rate, the Hurricanes will hit the power play for the first time. And the Axe Women win the draw. This will get carried out and just fired down the ice. That'll kill some valuable time as Menard handles the puck. She'll swing it around the net where J.C. McMillan will pick it up. Dishes back to Dixon. Emma Dixon with control of it here. She'll go cross ice. And winding up the side here is Jenna White. White brings it in. And we'll see if the Hurricanes try to set something up here. And being... Ridden into the corner there was the Hurricanes player. As Rankin will cycle it around, brings it out to the front, and there's a goal! Claire Rankin on the power play for the Hurricanes. Nice cycle game there from Rankin, taking full advantage of the extra player on the ice. And just like that, it is 1-0 Hurricanes, 2.51 into this one. That's an important early start here for the Hurricanes. And that'll get the home crowd here at Cavendish Farms Wellness Center into it. And plays back underway here. And Acadia going with its big line here. Uh, but they're going to ice the puck straight away. So face off down in the Axe Women's Zone. And that's going to go down in the books as Rankin unassisted on the power play at 2.51. And a scramble draw here. The Axe Women take control of it. Ryan chips it down, and this looks like it'll be another icing. And it is. So the Hurricanes getting off to a good early start here. They're leading the top-seeded Axe Women 1-0, just 3.07 into this one. So obviously quite early in the contest. Lots of time for the Axe Women. And the Hurricanes win that draw, but the Axe Women take control of it. And bringing it out of the zone are the Axe Women. They get it into Hurricanes territory. And another little puck battle. 
And they bring it out front. There's Atkinson trying to get it, but Menard appears to be up to the challenge here. Looks like the puck didn't cross the line. So we're going to get a face off to Menard's right. But a good drive from Atkinson there. Once again, the Axe Women captain. And before this contest began, once again, she was named a first team All Star. And with good reason. She was the league's leading scorer this year seven goals, four assists, and eight games. And McMillan taking the draw against Pike, who wins it cleanly for Acadia. D to D play there, but the Hurricanes will take control. Here's McMillan bringing it up. And no offside there as White chases that puck. Jenna White with a good presence down there, joined by Rankin, our goal scorer early. But the Axewoman will bring it out. Unable to control it there was number eight, Sage Breton. And oh, just about a miscue there from Menard, but she's able to get back and cover it up. And once again, that'll give us a face off in the Holland College zone. In case you're just tuning in, Claire Rankin has the early power play marker for the Hurricanes, and they're up 1 0 over Acadia, 356 in. And Acadia once again takes control of the draw, strong in the circle so far. And they center it out front, but nobody home. Casibo, she pops it into the corner there. A couple of Hurricanes converge on the Axe Woman. And coming out of the zone here will be number 17, Billy McKay. And now crossing the blue line here, this is Taylor with the puck. Taylor with the shot, nice stop from Longley with the blocker. And getting out of the zone here will be the Axe Woman. Off the skate, though. And that was Pike chipping it forward, trying to get a change. But again, the Hurricanes take control. And now coming up the boards with it was number 17 for the Axe Woman, Abby Legier. But the Hurricanes have control once more. And Legier just about stripped it. But yeah, it looks like the Axe Woman will get control and it's just fired down the ice once again by once again Eric Kasebo number 92 and that resulted in icing and we're going to get a face off to the left of Brittany Longley here in the Acadia goal and clean win there from McMillan shot goes a little bit wide and McMillan recovered the puck behind the net. There's Rankin out to the slot. There's Dixon. She couldn't quite get anything on that. And here's White cycling it. She'll dish it down to McMillan. Puck squirted loose, but now the Axe Women will take it out. But good stop from Dixon there just past the blue line. And that's fired down the ice. That's going to get waved off. And it looks like we've lost a neck guard here on the ice. And that's number seven, that's Collins. She'll have to go off now that she's lost the neck guard. No harm, no foul, no penalty. But taking advantage of the line change, there's Atkinson trying to get in the zone, blocked by McKay. And I thought that might have been offside, but nevertheless, it wasn't as the Hurricanes are able to clear. And they get it out once more. Here's Taylor bringing it in. And she's effectively blocked off there by number 14, Cromwell, named a second team ACHA All-Star prior to this contest. Cromwell going back for the puck. Couldn't quite get all of that, but Ryan's there on the half wall to get it out. And the Axe Woman just chip it in. And here's Billy McKay with it. She'll just fire it in, but the Axe Women are there to send it right back. And here comes number eight for the Axe Women, that's Breton once again. Trying to find Pike, but good tie up there by the Hurricanes defender. And now Taylor's got the puck, tried to clear, but that one's intercepted. That was Heltz with the interception there as the Hurricanes fire it down the ice. Longley forced to handle this one. And the Axe Women send it forward once again. But now the Hurricanes will bring it into the zone. White couldn't quite get the handle on that one. And again, the Axe Women will clear. That squeaks by Can, but Dixon will be there to pick it up for Holland College. About halfway through the first period in this one, 
one nothing Hurricanes, courtesy of a power play goal from Claire Rankin, who just about had another break. But the Axe women send it in instead. That was Legier chipping it forward. And there's Dixon with it, being pressured by Legier, but sends it over to Can. And now White picks it up on the half board. And the Axe women get control, slapper from the point. Just a little bit off target there, as Carey, distinguished by the red helmet there, was going for the puck, but the Hurricanes pick it up. Kept in the zone by the Axe women there. I believe that is McIntyre who kept it in. And Legier tried to fire it across, but nobody home. And squeaks by the Axe Woman defender at the blue line and ranking in a foot race there, but unable to pick that one up. And here's Ricks with the puck. Taylor Ricks from O'Leary PEI, local product. That is stripped, though, by Carey. But the Hurricanes are able to pick it up here once more. Heidi Culp with that one from Middleton. And that's sent in for Taylor on the near side. Taylor being pressured by Cromwell on the outside. Good protection there from the all-star defender. And once again, it's back behind the net. Brandy Harvey sends it forward. And now Paige D in with the puck. She'll send it back to DeShane. DeShane tries to cross ice pass, but that one's tipped. Atkinson with it now. And a little battle. Atkinson comes out with it, though. But she'll be cut off by DeShane. Alexandra DeShane coming from Edmondson, New Brunswick. As she sends that one up. And got to watch the line change here as the Axe women come in. Here's Lily Ryan with the puck. Ryan, a first-team All-Star shot. That's guided off to the side there by Menard. And another puck battle here. That was Hiltz getting tied up with Dixon there toward the end. And Harrison clears it out for the Hurricanes. No icing on that one. And that one is picked up by the Axe Woman defender. Sent up to Hiltz. Regan Hiltz being pressured there by Dixon, the Hurricanes captain. And nice chip there by Hiltz to get out of the Acadia zone, but Rankin's there to pick it right back up. This line of Rankin, White, and McMillan has certainly done its share of damage, and they've been effective in the offensive zone throughout this game here. As the Axe women pick it up, and they're able to get it out. Here's Hiltz crossing the blue line with it. She's She had Breton there with her, but... Menard's going to stop that one and we'll get another face off here in the Holland College zone. 4.52 left in the first period. The Hurricanes still leading this one by a score of 1 0 over the Axe Women. And a scramble draw there, won by the Axe Women, set behind the net. And that is Sarah Catro with the puck. Carey's able to chip that one around. And coming out with it here is Paige Dean. Dean's still going with it. She crosses the Acadia blue line. And Dean's still going for it. Dimock meets her behind the net. Haley Dimock, product of Sook, BC. Here for the Axe women. As Legier tries to clear that one, but that's blocked off there by Heidi Kolp. And Dimock sends that one forward. Cattrall here on the half boards. And Acadia gets that one back out. Cattrall chips it forward. Looks like McKay has a stick in there. And yeah, she will be called for a hook here. Billy McKay heading to the box here for the Hurricanes, sending Acadia to its first power play of the night. 4-0-2 remaining in the first period. 1-0 Hurricanes. But as mentioned, the Hurricanes scored their marker on the power play. This is Acadia's first opportunity with the extra skater. And draw controlled by the Hurricanes, and they get it out of the zone, but that is controlled by the Axe Women once again. They'll go cross ice. Here's Atkinson with a little bit of open space. Got Can a little bit flat-footed there. She gets into the zone. Atkinson sends it around the net. There's Cromwell with it, slapper. And that one's knocked aside by Menard. And Atkinson in the slot. And it's in. 
And that's why she was the first team all-star this season, ladies and gentlemen. Melissa Atkinson with the power play marker and the Axe women level this one at one with 3.35 remaining in the first period. And a very similar idea to what we saw on the Hurricanes goal. Atkinson with a little bit of cycling work to bring it into the zone. The teammates found her. And forgive us for the technical difficulties here, but we are live once again. And as mentioned, it is now level at 1-1. And the Axe women control it here. And the Hurricanes bring it back into the zone. But Acadia is able to clear that one. DeShane back for it. Over to Rex. Taylor Rex will bring it into the Acadia zone. But she is met by the Acadia defender there. That was Pike. She met, and that one's chipped out. I believe that was Hilt on that one. And here comes McDougal. McDougal chips it in there for Holland College. And that goal is going to go into the books as Atkinson from Pike on the power play at 11.05 of the first period. And once again, we are knotted up at 1-1 as the Hurricanes will clear the zone here. And the Axe women have control of the puck. That's Harvey with it behind the net. She cycles it back to Sarah Cattro. But she's met there by McMillan. And stoppage in play. It looks like the puck got stuck on the boards there. Hey, haven't seen that one in a little while. But the end result here will be a face-off in the Acadia zone to the right of starting goaltender Brittany Longley. Oh, my mistake. It looks like they're going to take it outside here. Yeah, just in the neutral zone here as Acadia takes control of the draw. And the Axeman will bring it in here. And good job by Dixon there defensively to cut that one off as she sends it across ice. And Taylor chips it in past Harvey there on the near side. And Dixon tries to get a hold of that one, but the Axeman will bring it out. And here's Lily Ryan. Lily Ryan, very dangerous, first team all-star. Ryan going for it, but Menard is up to the task. Making the stop on the backhand as Ryan ran out of room there. We'll get a face off to the left of the Holland College goaltender. 144 remaining in this first period. And as a reminder to our viewers, there will be no flood between the first and second period, so don't go anywhere once the period ends. We'll be right back. As the Hurricanes take control of this draw, they'll chip that one out that was Cormier off the glass now Acadia's got it they'll just fire it in looks like it went off the head of Atkinson but here's Ryan on the off wing and once again Menard up to the task and it looked like Menard may have tried to get a little jab in on Ryan as she cut across the crease nevertheless the puck does not come ajar and once again we'll have a face off to the right of Hall College keeper And it looks like it'll be the two big lines matching up here once again. And here's a chance for the Axe women. And oh, what a goal there from the Axe women. They've leveled this, or they've, excuse me, they've taken a 2-1 lead here. 122 remaining in the first period. Lovely play off the draw there from the Axe women. Just expertly working her way around the defense. Deking out Menard, who was already down. And the Axe women, again, take that 2-1 lead. We'll see if they can hold it for the final 122 to go into our brief first intermission with the lead. And another scramble draw here at center ice. And that's Ali Norris with the goal there, her first of the tournament my apologies for not bringing up a name before there had not been an 86 in the program and the Axe women 86 to that opportunity but the Hurricanes are able to bring that one around here's Taylor with it Taylor cycling around her own zone but Heltz is able to cut her off 
Eventually Cannes got it. Can sends that one forward. And just content to chip that in will be number 16, Culp. And the Axe women have it there. That's Pike. She got it out of the zone. Controlled by Katie. It looks like, oh, that could have been another too many player on the ice call, but that one went uncalled as Carrie makes her way in. And she's cut off by Dixon there. We're in the final minute of the period, but with 22 seconds remaining, it looks like Dixon's going to go to the box for Holland College. Going to say, and it's going to be a hook here to Dixon. So late in the period, Acadia will go to its second power play of the evening. They scored on the first one, and we'll see if they can do the same thing here. But again, 22 seconds left in this opening period. And Holland College wins the draw. Send it up the boards, but that one's kept in by Cromwell. Hurricanes get it back. Fan on the clearing attempt. That was DeShane trying to get it out. And Dean has it in her skates. Again, blocked by Cromwell. And, oh, breakaway here. Paige Dean, she's got some space. And Dean, she is stopped. It looks like this one's not going to go here. It looked like the referee blew that one down. Hard to know if it was in or not. McMillan certainly showing her frustration. I'm trying to plead her case to the referee and linesman, but it looks like it'll be to no avail here with just two seconds remaining in the period. Certainly no shortage of entertainment in this opening frame here. And yeah, it looks like the faceoff will be to Longley's right here. Once again, just two seconds remaining in this opening frame here. Your Axe women leading Holland College by a score of 2-1. to one. And that would have been a potential momentum shifter for the Hurricanes and it looks like an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty has been called. And yeah, the faceoff is going to come all the way back into the Holland College zone. Five on three here. We'll see who they've called it on. The Hurricanes box door is open and it looks like Cormier from the bench may have jabbed a little bit too much. And yeah, Acadia motioning and yeah, the Hurricanes have gotten, gotten the hint here as Collins will come off the ice for this final two seconds. Five on three for a minute 40 here though, two seconds left in the period. And that'll wrap up the opening frame. Acadia leads this one by a score of two to one over the Hurricanes. They will take a five on three for a minute 40 into the second period, but don't go away. That second period is coming right up. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the second period. Acadia leading this one by a score of 2-1 over Holland College. The Axe women carry a five on three for a minute 40 to start this second frame. And now Amelia Cromwell has it for Acadia on the near side. She'll send it across. And sending it forward there, that's Pike, but good pressure there from behind by Dean. And she sends it down into the Acadia zone, killing a few precious seconds on this five on three. And it looks like Atkinson's gonna try and wheel. Her clearing attempt intercepted by Dean. And Atkinson, it looks like she's gonna get called for a trip here. And indeed, that's gonna nullify at least one of the advantages here. 31 seconds into this second period. 
And again with Atkinson, that is a big offensive weapon off the ice here for a couple minutes for the Axe women. So we're gonna get some four on three here and a little bit of open ice. This should be fun as the Axe women win the draw. That is Haley Dimmock with the puck. She tries to get around, but Jenna White intercepts. White behind the net. Just trying to kill some time here, it looks like. She's got Rankin with her and Deshane on the point. Deshane's got it now. Deshane with a little bit of room. She fires it. Nice save by Longley. And Casibo sends it forward. And the Axe women still have it here. That is Legere sending it up. And Acadia gets it into the zone. And Deshane with it. Tries to find Rankin, but instead she'll just send it down the ice. Never a bad play when you're down a couple of players. But good pressure from White there on Dimmick. And 15 seconds left in this first Hurricanes penalty. Then we'll go four on four for about 20 seconds. As Acadia will bring it out here. A little bit of space. And there's, that was Casibo bringing it up from the point. And now Rankin with it. And Deshane's gonna get it. We're now four on four here for the next 13 seconds. And that was fired on net. But Menard watches it all the way into her glove and we'll get a stoppage in play. 13-11 left in this second period. Acadia leading this one 2-1. And now you'll notice players from both sides here sporting sort of a mauve slash purple tape on their stick blades here this game here in particular is a hockey fights cancer initiative within the rink here tonight as can has the puck she sends it forward and here's mcmillan with it hurricanes now on the power play as cormier comes off and longley watches that one into the glove face off will come in the acadia zone 24 seconds remaining on this Hurricanes power play. With 12.53 left in the second period. Still early on. Acadia leading this one by a score of 2-1. And McMillan wins the draw. That's over to Dixon. And fired on net by Rankin. That one's just a little bit off target. White with the puck behind the net. Back to Rankin. Rankin at the point. She mishandles it though. And there's Ryan on the break. She's got Pike with her, but can't find the seam as the Hurricanes will bring it up. And here's Dean with it. She gains control of the puck. Gets around Ryan a couple of times. Dean fires it just wide of the net. And there's Rankin with it. Tries the drop pass, but Acadia will recover that one. Five on five here once again. Dixon sends it over to the boards. Holland College will make a change. And misfire there by Dixon as Norris just about had that one. And sent out in front by Brenton, but nobody there. And the Hurricanes have it once more. McDougal brings it into the zone, but Acadia briefly recovers, but Brianna Cormier comes out with it. Centering pass, handled by Longley. And Acadia's got it here. This will be Norris bringing it up here. Second goal scorer here for Acadia. But now Cormier's got it. She'll just fire it into the Acadia zone. And back to retrieve it is Haley Dimmock. And she tries to send it up to the side. Intercepted by Ricks. Acadia does get it out eventually, but can has got it. And a little bit of open ice. Lily Ryan just unable to handle that one, but she'll get to this puck first. Centering pass, nobody home. And now Katie's got it, and another interception in the Holland College zone. And Abby Legere, she's gonna make it 3-1 here for the Axe women. So, good pressure there from the Axe women. They're able to force the turnover out of the Hurricanes, and they extend their lead to two, with 11-10 remaining in this first period. Or second period, excuse me. And we'll see how the Hurricanes respond here. And we'll get the official announcement momentarily on the goal. And that's intercepted by White. Jenna White bringing it into the zone for the Hurricanes. 
And the Axe women have it. They're going to bring it up the ice. And here's Legere, who's just scored the third goal for Acadia. Tries to fire the shot, but it's blocked by DeShane. And Menard, another puck that she has to follow intently. They're able to get it out. The Hurricanes will get it on the boards here as White's got it. And it looks like interference penalty called here on the Hurricanes. It looks like it'll be J.C. McMillan going off. So once again, Acadia to the power play. And that last goal, in case you missed it, was Legier from Regan Hilt. And perhaps you can hear some of the uh, vocal non-supporters of the referees here as the Acadia Axe women are back on the power play for the third time. And, but Deanne's able to clear it. She's got some open space, but Cromwell's there to cut her off. And Deanne cuts back. Directed aside by Longley. And now Cromwell's got it behind the net. She'll just fire it up. Ryan cycles back for it. Dixon and Deanne pressuring her. But Acadia's got it here once more. And that's Norris again with it. And fired just wide there by Legere looking for, her, or Atkinson, excuse me, also looking for her second of the evening as Colt brings it up here for Holland College. Heidi Colt fires that one on net. And Longley's just going to stop play here. 9.52 remaining in the second period. 3 1 your score here, Acadia over Holland College. And the faceoff will come to the right of Longley here. And DeShane fires that one into the corner. Aaron Casibo will go back here for the Axe Woman. She'll fire that one up, but the Hurricanes pick it back up again. Here's Rankin. Claire Rankin with the Holland College goal earlier, if you recall, just on the power play. Rankin still with it. Good puck possession here from Rankin, burning some valuable seconds as she drops it back to DeShane, but her shot doesn't get through. And Ricks gets that one. Intercepted, though, by Atkinson. She'll send that one forward. Pike chips it into the Holland College zone. And DeShane gets that one back. And looks like... And, yeah, it looks like that one's just going to be called for going out of play. No too many player on the ice call there. Face-off will come just outside the Holland College zone. 9-10 remaining in the second period. 37 seconds remaining on the Acadia power play. And good pressure there from Dean to get that one forward. Casibo sends that one up. And once again, Paige Dean here playing an impressive game on special teams. She just fires that one out. And now Haley Dimmick's got it for Acadia. And good battle there with number 16 for the Hurricanes. That was Culp also playing a solid game on the penalty kill here so far as Acadia chips it forward. And we're back to five on five, and Acadia has iced the puck. So face-off will come to the right of Brittany Longley here, who's kind of settled down into the game here after that early goal from Rankin. And it'll be the two big lines facing off against one another. Scramble draw, Acadia comes out with it. Amelia Cromwell chips that one up, but Dixon's there to intercept. Atkinson sends that one over, but it's picked off. Jenna White with it. Jenna White for the Hurricanes. That one, another strong play there from Cromwell. Able to jab that one away. Can with it here. And Cromwell sends that one across the ice. And they're able to get it out. Here's Maddie Carey with it. Carey will chip that one across. No offside there. Shot gets blocked by Can, But Atkinson gets it right back. Sent back to the point. Chipped up forward. McMillan gets that one out for Holland College. And Acadia with a little bit of time here. They will send it across the ice. That is McIntyre who sent it forward. And Breton it looked like a couple of Axe women there were both looking to shoot. Neither came out with it. Centering pass also, nobody home. 
And now Dixon sends it forward to Harrison. Meredith Harrison carrying it here now for Holland College. Kind of angled off to the side. Oh, bit of a rebound there from Longley. And Ricks is unable to keep that one in. Sends it back. Hurricanes get back on side. And here's Breton with it. Sage Breton. And that one's going to get called offside. It looks like that little move at the blue line just sent Pike over by half a step. Face off will come outside the Hurricanes blue line here. 7.03 remaining in the second period, after which we will have a flood between the second and third. And Dean wins that draw here for the Hurricanes. Sent forward by DeShane, but both Pike and Hiltz were there to get that one, but Breton, her opportunity just misses. And another centering pass. Nobody home as Colt will bring it out. But she's pressured off the puck by Pike, and now Regan Heltz has it. And gives it to DeShane here for the Hurricanes. And now Heidi Kolp finds some open ice. She's in there because Kolp fires it. Longley just directs that one aside. Kolp picks it right back up. And Taylor battling with Casibo, it looks like, down there. Now Pike with it. Pike and Dean battling along the boards. Dean comes out with it. And loose puck in front. It was never covered. But the referee lost sight of it and play is blown down. And got a little bit of a discussion here in front of the net, but it looks like we'll see the faceoff come to the left of Brittany Longley here. 6-16 remaining in this second period. Acadia up 3-1 over the Holland College Hurricanes here. Again, season series, tightly contested, sort of like this game, but Acadia coming out with the advantage early on here. Acadia won two of the four contests between the two teams this season, and they tied the other two. So Axwoman feeling good going into this one as they've got the puck in their own zone. And that one gets chipped out. This is Norris with it here, two on one. She's got Ryan. Norris fires it, and Menard just able to get that one. And Dixon sends it around the net. Here's Collins with it. Collins chips it up. And now Jason McMillan has it, three on two developing. And McMillan, she's by her defender here. And White just sends that one over the net here for the Hurricanes. White tries to send that one out front. But it'll squirt out here, Collins has it. And Collins in a board battle here with I believe Norris down there. And the puck is frozen along the boards. Face off will remain in the Acadia zone. And while we've got a moment here, we'd like to acknowledge some of our sponsors here for this weekend. Keep it social.ca, Holland College Student Union, Sports Center Physiotherapy, Press for Time and Abigail screen, screen Printing and Embroidery, uh, Mind Matters Metal Performance Training, uh, Coach Atlantic, PEI Source for Sports, and East Coast Crusting. As the Axe Women get it into the hurricane zone here, that's Carey with it. Again, distinguishable by the red helmet here is Maddie Carey, but that one squirts out. And McKay sent that one forward, but the Axe Women intercept. Taylor unable to handle that one, and now here's, I believe, Legier. And that one got sent across the ice. As the Hurricanes will bring this one out, here's Culp with it. Heidi Culp brings it across the Acadia blue line. And just chips it over the net there. The Hurricanes scrambling to get a line change in. But Acadia will regain possession here in its own zone. And Dimmick sends it across, but it's turned over. Here's White with it. She fires. Nice stop by Longley. And, oh, McMillan going for a hack, and Longley responds. We'll see how many they take here. Will they just take McMillan, or will they take both? No, we've got one, and it looks like it'll just be one, despite the retaliatory slash there from Longley. And so, with 4.19 remaining in this second period, the Axe women are going right back to the power play. They've been effective with the extra skater so far. 
And that's a big reason why they lead this one 3-1. And the Hurricanes giving Menard a bit of a love tap there, so to speak, as Dean will step in to take the draw against Atkinson. And Lily Ryan's got it here for Acadia. She'll send it around the net. Dixon retri retrieves it, excuse me, for Holland College. Cromwell unable to keep it in. And Dean will be first to the puck here. And looks like Norris bringing it out here. Intercepted by the Hurricanes. Not touched up there by Dean, so play will continue. And Dixon will just send that one across the ice, burning a few more precious seconds. And now Amelia Cromwell here behind the net. She will leave it for Axe Women Captain Melissa Atkinson as Ricks. It looks like she hit a rut in the ice and just tripped up. And Dixon pinned against the boards by Pike and Ricks goes down again. I wonder if there's something going on with the skate as Ryan comes out with it and big save there from Lindsay Menard. Hurricanes needed that one from Menard risking going down 4-1 here late in this second period. Instead, they're still within striking distance. 324 remaining in this frame here. 105 left in the second or in the power play, excuse me. And the Axe women control the draw. Casibo at the point. And here's Regan Hiltz with it. Regan Hiltz on the half boards, trying to center that one for Breton. And that one clears the zone. Excuse me there, as Hiltz brings it in for the Axe Woman, she leaves that one for Legier. And Hiltz tried to redirect there, but just a little bit wide. Sage Breton with it here, and still sends it down low. And that's Hiltz with it. Hiltz being pressured by Can, And down to Legier, trying to center that one. But Legier will get it right back, still being watched by Can. And they go across the ice here. They've got a lane here. But unable to find Rankin there for the breakaway. And it looks like we're going to get an offside call here. With eight seconds remaining in this Acadia power play, 227 left until we see the Zamboni for a flood here between the second and third. And another scramble draw here, but the Axeman will bring it in. Ryan with it here on the near boards. Brought in here by Norris. Norris cycles back, just leaves it for Cromwell. Back to Norris. Norris makes her way out to the front. There's Ryan with it. And another nice stop there from Menard as we're back to five on five. And there's Atkinson with it in the corner. She'll send it around for Lily Ryan, who will decide to leave it for Amelia Cromwell. Shot squirts off to the other side, and that'll be Taylor picking it up for Holland College. And Dan's able to skate that one out. Paige, Dan's still going with it. And Cromwell cuts her off behind the Acadia goal. Dixon will pinch here. And now Norris has got it. Acadia looking to break out here once more. Lily Ryan crossing center ice. Oh, nice move there by Ryan. Gets around White, bringing it into the Holland College zone. Atkinson controls that one with the skate. And shot just about found Hiltz there on the other side. And Hurricanes clear it. And McMillan is going to get the icing negated there. And here's Claire Rankin with the puck. We're coming up on the final minute. Here's Collins takes the shot. One minute remaining in this second period. And White out in front. And that is a big stop there by Brittany Longley just to keep this one at a two goal advantage for the Axe women. 54 seconds remaining in the second frame. And we'll see if the Hurricanes can close this gap here a little bit before the uh, end of the frame as Dixon tried to get on the ice there, but the referee wouldn't allow that change. It was a little late. As a result, McMillan gets thrown out of the circle and the Axe women control that. 
And the Axe Women send it forward. Nice chip up the boards by Pike to try and get around Can, but Can controls that one briefly. The Hilt takes the shot, but that one's blocked. Here comes JC McMillan. ACHA first team all-star this season for the Hurricanes. McMillan cutting to the middle, and Longley, it looked like she mishandled that, but it bounces back to her from the end boards, and she's able to cover that one up. 29 seconds left here in this second period. Once again, the Axe women leading this one 3-1. And the Hurricanes control that one off the faceoff. Dixon tried to make herself look big, but now the Axe Woman will bring it out. Poked forward there by Cottrell. She had that one, but now Dean brings it in for the Hurricanes. And Casibo pressured. And Culp with the shot. That one got high on Longley. But now the Axe Woman will bring it out as we hit the dying seconds of this period. And they'll just fire it down the ice and That'll bring the second period to a close. So with 15 minutes left in this one, the Acadiacs women are up 3-1 over the Holland College Hurricanes. And now before we take a little break here between periods, as we'll see the Zamboni come on, we'll acknowledge the remainder of our sponsors here. Boston Pizza, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, DP Murphy Incorporated, ADL, Pepsi, City of Charlottetown, Domino's Pizza, Holland College, Holland College Canes Camp, Holland Hurricanes Academy, Hurricanes Physiotherapy, Hunter's Ale House, The Factory, Charlottetown Beer Garden, and John Brown Richmond Street Grill. And now, 3-1 Axe Women as we head to the third period. We'll be back in about 15 minutes.
can still hear it in here. Holland College is located in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. My name is Jess Cameron, the head coach of the Holland Hurricanes women's hockey team. The goals of the Holland Hurricanes uh, hockey program is to 
make it a reputable uh, varsity program um, with a high level of compete with other teams around Atlantic Canada. Life on Prince Edward Island is really like a sense of community. It is very nice and friendly. You can always find a friend or someone that you know. It's super, like a small town atmosphere. Academic life is good, it's challenging to still get through with the support of my teachers and the classmates. But as long as you're organized, like it's, it's pretty easy to manage. My impression on my instructors are amazing. They care about your future goals. They're passionate to what they're teaching. They really help balance the student athlete lifestyle. I think valuable aspects of playing post-secondary hockey is pretty limitless starting off with time management. Uh, I do believe that athletics help uh, keep students on track, knowing when assignments have to be done and homework has to be done before they get to the rink is actually a really helpful uh, piece in the student athlete's uh, experience. To be able to continue playing high level hockey is really important for me. I've been playing hockey since I was a little girl and being able to continue to play while going to school means a lot. Another positive aspect of playing a sport at the post-secondary level is uh, having an immediate support group. 20-odd teammates and coaches uh, is just an extra helping hand in the college process. The best part of being a student athlete is probably like you see your teammates all the time and then you see them at school and at the gym and it's just like you really have a sense of belonging. Being able to take my athletic skills and my academic skills and put them together, no matter where you go, around campus and there's always people like telling you like oh you had a good game or something like that so it's really a positive environment. One of the benefits of being an athlete at Holland College is the athletics department support, tons of media coverage, athletes of the week, uh, walking around campus. It's just a really positive environment with athletes from all sports interacting, smiling, talking about their performances over the weekend. My impressions on my coaches this year are amazing. They give us a lot of like really good feedback. It's nice having three female coaches. They've all played high level hockey so they know like how to balance like your schoolwork and with your practice time and game time and they're always there at the gym to like cheer us on and stuff so it's really supportive. As a coach uh, while I'm recruiting I'm definitely looking for a good balance in you know speed, skill and hockey IQ. They need to be ready to compete every day and have the commitment level to play at a collegiate level. We're looking for players that And we're back for the third period of this opening contest of the Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association Championship here at the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center in Montague PEI. For a quick reset here, the Acadia Axe women are up 3-1 to one over the Holland College Hurricanes. The Hurricanes got the scoring started early as Claire Rankin scored on the power play, but Acadia's rattled off three goals since then. The goals coming from Melissa Atkinson, Ali Norris, and Abby Legier. And it looks like we're just about ready to go here, just clarifying a couple of things that appears on the Acadia bench. Coach Weatherby having a discussion with the referees there. Now we'll see what kinds of adjustments head coach Jess Cameron and the rest of the Hurricanes have opted to try and make here as we go into the third period, down two goals. And now Atkinson going over to chat with the referees, listening in on the discussion. Well, while we've got a moment, we'll remind you that for any tournament information, please head over to www.AtlanticCollegiateHockey.ca or follow along on Twitter at AtlanticHKY. And as another reminder, the championship game Sunday afternoon for the ACHA title. It'll be on Bell TV One, the main channel. Channel 401 for five TV subscribers as well as channel one in standard definition. And it looks like we're just about ready to go here. McMillan to face off with Atkinson and we are underway for the third period. Acadia sends that one down to Shane going back, icing waved off. Can will get this one for the Hurricanes. She'll stop and turn around her net here. Can got it. She'll go back around, finding Rankin with it, but Norris there to cut it off. 
And collision there, but the puck will get out. Katie sends it back in, offside indicated as Can retrieves it. Deshane with it now. Alexander Deshane getting out of the zone, being pressured by Atkinson. Deshane will get that in. And Amelia Cromwell gets that one for Acadia. She'll send that one up for Ryan, but intercepted briefly. And Acadia will get this one out. Nice chip up the boards there from Norris to get it into Holland College territory. And Deshane will send that one over for Dixon. Hurricanes captain Emma Dixon there with it. She tries to clear it, but she's able to regain it. Sends it up forward for Megan Taylor. And the Hurricanes will skate that one in. That was Culp with it, kept in here by Dixon, the Hurricanes captain. And battle along the boards here. Taylor will come out with it, it appears. Yeah, tried to get that one out front, but it's intercepted by Breton, who clears it out for Acadia. Now Collins back with it. Sarah Collins still with the puck here for Acadia, pressured by Hilt. And Taylor sends that one across for... Looked like Cormier there just coming off the bench. But Pike's able to retrieve that one, sends it up for Hiltz. Hiltz tries cross ice, but intercepted by Cormier. And now Hiltz has a little bit of space following the clearing attempt. Regan Hiltz with it. She'll fire that one on. Menard makes the save on the off angle. And sent into the hurricane zone once again. Can back to retrieve it. Can sends that one up for Jenna White. She's being pressured by Legere. And Acadia gets that one out. Can with it, she'll send it back in. Hurricanes get back on side, allowing Acadia to gain possession. And here's Rankin with it, she'll fire one on net. Rebound, and Longley there to make the save on McMillan. Just maybe a little half step off there from finding the open cage. Face-off will come to the left of Brittany Longley here. 12.37 remaining in this third period. Acadia leading this one three goals to one. And Rankin sends that one back for Dixon. And that shot's blocked. A little bit of open ice here. But Deshane's able to cut that one off. Alexander Deshane with it behind the net. Sends it around for Rankin. Claire Rankin with it here. She'll cycle around Carey. Tries to find White, but it's kept in the zone by the Axe women here who have it behind the Holland College goal. And Deshane trying to center that one. And another clearing attempt goes awry there. Legere will chip that one back in for Acadia. And now McMillan tries to wheel, but Carey gets a stick in there, able to stop that breakout from happening. And now the Hurricanes will get called for icing. And that'll bring the face off to the left of Lindsay Menard here in the Holland College goal. Acadia has certainly done a good job of ramping up the pressure here, particularly in the second period. Although the Hurricanes do take this draw. They're able to clear it out. Ricks had that one poked away by Atkinson. But here's Taylor, she crosses the red line. Megan Taylor followed by Atkinson. Good defensive play there from Melissa Atkinson. Perhaps better known offensively, having led the league in scoring this season. But once again, a good defensive play to get back. And offside called there on the Hurricanes. Puck will come outside the Acadia zone. And while we have a moment, once again, we'll take a moment to thank some of our sponsors. KeepItSocial.ca, Collin College Student Union, Sports Center Physiotherapy, Pressed for Time and Abigail Screen Printing and Embroidery, Mind Matters Metal Performance Training, Hunter's Ale House, The Factory, Charlottetown Beer Garden, John Brown Richmond Street Grill, and Coach Atlantic. And now the Hurricanes have it in deep. That's McDougal sending it back for Dixon. Dixon fires that one in. Bouncing puck there as Harrison got it for the Hurricanes briefly. But Demick will bring it out of the zone here for Acadia. Haley Dimmick, nice move there on Collins to get into the slot, but the Hurricanes collapse on her there, and Harrison retrieves it. Now, Lily Ryan comes out with it, and couldn't quite get that one around Menard. Menard scrambling to get back up in the Holland College goal. She is back to her feet, and McDougal sends that one down the ice. 
And Lily Ryan's got it there for Acadia. She's being pressured by Collins at the Holland College blue line. Now Jenna White comes out with it. Head manned up for JC McMillan. McMillan thought she had some open ice there for a moment, and she did get a shot off, albeit on a bad angle. And Can will keep this one in for Holland College. Back to Can here from Rankin. Claire Rankin with it on the half boards. Good defensive pressure, and we're gonna get an Axe Woman penalty here. We're gonna get a hooking call. And this could be an important momentum shifter here for Holland College. As we'll see who takes the penalty here. Once again, it's a hook with 10.02 remaining here in this third period. Holland College will go back to the power play. And of course, their one marker earlier in the contest did come with the extra skater. And draw controlled by the Hurricanes. Dixon with the shot. Longley's able to see that one. And the Axe Women clear it. Foot race here. It looks like Pike and McMillan. Pike looks like she had a step there, but McMillan's able to control it. Jason McMillan with some open ice gets around carry. McMillan still skating it up into the Acadia zone. JC McMillan in the middle. Oh, what a goal from JC McMillan! End to end rush there from JC McMillan, and just like that, it's a one goal game. And that gets the crowd back into this one with 9.38 left in the third period. JC McMillan, she saw her opportunity, she saw some open ice and she was able to take full advantage of it, getting into the slot and roofing it over the glove of Brittany Longley. And once again, it is a 3-2 game. These last nine minutes and 38 seconds, they should be a burn burner here in Montague. And Dean sends it in for Holland College off the faceoff. Taylor just about got to that. And Acadia will skate that one out. Here's Norris with it. Drop pass for Atkinson. Atkinson sends it over. And Menard's able to cover up following that shot. Shot coming from McIntyre there. Face off will come to Menard's left. And again, there's a renewed sense of energy here at the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center following that goal from JC McMillan. And the Hurricanes take control of the faceoff. There's DeShane rattling it up the boards. And the Hurricanes have a two on one here again. McDougal with it. And McDougal! Bethany McDougal, just like that, it's a tie game. She had Cormier on the two on one, decided to keep. Fires it past Longley on the blocker side. Two goals in less than a minute. And this one's tied right back up at 3 3. And if there was energy in the building before, you're hearing it really come to life here in Montague now. And Jess Cameron wasting no time, sending her big line right back out. And Rankin chips that one past. Claire Rankin with it, and oh, nice stop from Longley. Just grazed off the blocker there. Cromwell's got it behind the net. She'll send it up there, Sage Breton with it. Again, two goals in less than a minute. Have the Hurricanes right back in this one. It's tied up at three. And the Hurricanes will go right back to the power play. We've got a roughing call here. So with 8.38 left in the third period, this game has shifted here in the last minute to a minute and a half as we see That'll be number 21 going off here. Brandy Harvey going off for roughing. So with 8.38 remaining in the third period, Hurricanes going right back to the power play. And Culp wins the draw. Taylor will chip that one back to Can. Back to Taylor on the half board. She fires that one. That shot gets blocked. And Dimmick with a looked like a little bit of interference there, but Pike's able to chip that one out. Can gets control. Can over to DeShane. Passes behind McDougal here. McDougal chips that one up to Culp. 
And the Axeman will just send that one right back out. Menard there to play it. She'll send it out of the hurricane zone. Pike with it now. Pike chips it back in deep. Megan Taylor to reset behind the net here. Taylor headmans that one for White. Gets around Carey, gets the Acadia zone. Jenna White getting around. She'll cycle that one around the net. Sends that one back to Dixon at the point. Her shot goes a little bit wide. Longley can't cover that one up and McMillan's able to keep this one in. But Dimmick's got it for Acadia and she will, she sent that one out of play, but it went into the Axe Woman bench, so no delay of game penalty there. Faceoff will come inside the Acadia zone to the right of Brittany Longley here, 3-3 three, three in what's become a very exciting contest here in this third period. 7.36 remaining. And 58 seconds left in the power play as we've got a scramble draw. Rankin at the point, she's got room. And Longley stops that one. Pretty clear lane in front of Longley on that shot attempt. Nevertheless, the Hurricanes have come out and really applied the pressure to Acadia here, which is basically what the Axe women did through the later parts of the first and the second period to gain their advantage. So brand new game here. Scramble draw. And the Hurricanes will keep it in. Rankin, she'll fire that one on goal. That one will go wide. And Atkinson, she gets that one out. Dixon unable to hold the line. Emma Dixon back to retrieve it, allowing her Hurricanes mates to change up. And coming out with it here will be, appears to be Culp, but that one's poked away. And we've got a little bit of open ice here. And we have Switzer with an opportunity. Brooke Switzer, we haven't heard much from her tonight, but that opportunity is stopped by Menard. A bit of a delayed stoppage to the play. But again, Menard's able to cover that one up amid the uh, numerous bodies in her crease. And so with 6.48 left in the third period, Faceoff will come to Menard's left here in the hurricane zone. Or actually, on account of the contact, the faceoff will come outside. And the Axe women control that one. Demick will send that one deep. And now Ryan's got it. Thought she might have put herself offside there, but Linesman says otherwise as Norris has it. And puck bouncing in front. But the Hurricanes able to retrieve that one. Cormier sends that one forward. McDougal in a foot race here. And that one's going to be called for icing here as we're back to five on five. 6.25 remaining in the third period. Now, in the event that this one does go to overtime here, and with 6.25 left, we are all tied up. The overtime format will see three minutes of rest between the end of the third and an overtime perspective overtime session, excuse me. And it'll be a 10 minute session. The first five minutes will be contested at four on four. And then the final five minutes will be contested at three on three. And if there's no winner, we're going to a shootout after that. So we have that to potentially look forward to as we hit six minutes remaining in this third period as Rankin's able to carry it around the outside. And the Hurricane's able to keep that one in briefly. But Dixon's going to go back to retrieve this one for Holland College. Being pressured here by Lily Ryan. And Hurricane's able to get that change in as Acadia gets it back into the zone. But there's Colt to get it right back. Heidi Colt playing a very uh, plucky game here in this one as the Hurricanes get it back into the zone. And there's Taylor and... Just a little bit of a hook on that shot. Sends it a little bit wide, but the Hurricanes keep it in. And Longley just redirects that lengthy shot attempt from Dixon, but she gets it right back at the point. Sends it across, Megan Taylor with it. And Taylor's centering pass, intended for Culp. Couldn't quite get a handle on that. And the Axe women do get that one out. But again, persistence from Heidi Culp, able to get that puck back. 
And the Axwoman going in there. Holding on to the puck there is number 27, Cottrell. But the Hurricanes are able to get that one out. McDougal applying a little bit of pressure here as Harvey goes back for the puck. Sends that one around, but Brianna Cormier is there. Harvey sends that one forward. And Brianna Harvey will get it right back. She'll send that one around the other way. And McMillan's there to meet that puck. Harvey once again trying to clean that one up for Acadia. And behind the play, it looked like there was a bit of extracurricular, but nothing called. And McMillan has it at the Acadia bench, poked forward for White. Jenna White with the shot from an off angle. Longley able to glove that one down, bringing perhaps a needed stop to the play here for the Axe women just to get themselves organized. 4.05 remaining in this third period. We're all tied up at three. And in the event that we do go to overtime, it's international rules here, so or NHL rules, excuse me. So each team will get at least a point and they'll battle for the second point. And Dean got turned around there, but she's still got the puck. And Culp still battling for it. And Kasibo's able to send that one out. And Taylor's got it, she's battling Pike for the puck. Regan Hilt's able to get that one out. Chip back into the Acadia zone. And sent forward. That's Breton with the shot. Redirected by Menard. And the Hurricanes will chip that one out. Try and get a change going here. And there's Cromwell sending it up to center ice. And puck squeaks out here for McDougal. McDougal takes it into the Acadia zone. But a couple of defenders converged on her there. But Collins intercepts the uh, headlong pass there. And now Atkinson's got it for Acadia. Atkinson tried to get Sage Breton there, but just out of her reach, and as a result, it's gonna be icing. 2.57 remaining in the third period. Acadia and Holland College, they're locked up at three. The Hurricanes have a couple of goals here, scored within a minute, and that's how we've gotten locked back up at three here. McMillan in to take the draw. Atkinson in there for Acadia, Holland College wins it, and shot just wide there. It looked like it might've gotten redirected by Rankin as Collins keeps it in. Now Melissa Atkinson with it behind her own net. And Atkinson finds a seam up the middle and finds Norris here on the near side, poked away by Dixon. Atkinson there to retrieve it for Acadia. And that's gonna go over to Cromwell. She'll get it inside Holland College territory. Dixon now with it. And Atkinson unable to keep that one in. McMillan might have had a lane to that, but she's going off for a change instead. Meanwhile, Rankin's got it. Dishes it off there for Dean, And looked like the net might have come off there. And indeed the referee does bring a halt to the play as the net was knocked ajar there. 2-10 remaining in the third. And face off will come to Brittany Longley's left here. Dean to take the draw here for the college. And she was against Legere as the puck squeaked out front there for a moment. And now Culp has it for Holland College. Heidi Culp being pressured by Harvey there. Carey comes out with it. Maddie Carey trying to get it out, but intercepted by Culp. And Longley's going to cover that one up. And the faceoff will come to her right. Certainly the uh, stakes being ratcheted up on both sides here as we've got a minute 51 left in the third period. Both teams would obviously dearly love to get a regulation victory here as that could effectively get them a ticket to Sunday afternoon's final. And the shot attempt from Collins there, that's blocked. And Carey thought she had a lane there. I think Acadia was looking for a hooking call, didn't get it. And the Axe women have it. Breton sends it forward. Or, excuse me, that was number nine Switzer on that one, not Breton. And Switzer with it here now. Switzer also named an ACHA All-Star earlier this evening. 
And puck comes loose right in front of the Acadia bench. Switzer comes out with it. And Paige Dean, she's been all over the ice here for the Hurricanes tonight. She's played strong at both ends. Uh, but there's a turnover, and here's Sage Breton. She'll cycle back here, let things get set up. And now Culp has it as we're into the final minute of this third period. Heidi Culp, she'll fire that one on net. Longley stops that one. Faceoff will come to the right of the Acadia goaltender here. 52 seconds remaining in this third period. We'll see if either team calls a timeout to try and draw something up here. It looks like we'll play on. Puck gets back to the point there for the Hurricanes. Culp tried to redirect that one, but Cromwell's able to get a stick in there. She fires that one forward. And now here's Andrea Pike with it. Two on one, she's got Hiltz in the center of the ice. Pike, she tries to center that one. Hiltz just a little bit off on the redirection there. 30 seconds remaining in this third period. Acadia will send that one in deep. Now Alex DeShane with it. She'll send that one up to Megan Taylor, unable to get a handle on that. Maxwoman have it comes across the ice to Cromwell, unable to handle that. Culp applying the pressure. Sent up once again. Here's Melissa Atkinson with it. Ten seconds to go. Atkinson looking to cycle around here, trying for the wraparound. But good defensive play there from Dixon to tie up the stick, and that allows Menard to cover that one up. Six seconds remaining in this third period. 3-3 three, three between the Axe women and the Hurricanes here. And it looks like it'll be McMillan and Atkinson taking this important draw here. McMillan goes down, and that one's fired on net. Menard looking to cover it up. Dixon was just looking to usher it into Menard's glove. Atkinson looking for an explanation from the refs on that one, but to no avail as we've got just one second remaining before a what looks to be an impending overtime session coming. And in to take the draw is Lily Ryan for Acadia, and Atkinson fires it. She got it off in time. Menard makes the nice glove save, and we are off to overtime here. 3-3 three, three between Acadia and Holland College. We'll be back in about three minutes for what's sure to be an exciting overtime session. Ha, <laughs> we
All right, we're back and ready to go for this overtime session in what's become a very spirited contest here between the Acadia Axe women and the Holland College Hurricanes. As Dimmick sends that one forward for Acadia. Shots in that third period were 13 to six in favor of the Hurricanes. As we see Dixon here with it, she fans on the clearing attempt. Ryan sends that one right back down. Now, this first overtime session you'll notice is four on four. That'll last for five minutes. If we don't have a winner, we'll go to five minutes of three on three. And if we still don't have a winner, we're going to a shootout after that as we see Atkinson come in. That shot's blocked by Can. And clearing attempt is fanned on there. Acadia still has it. Ryan sends it on net. Menard's able to cover that one up and it looks like the Hurricanes are gonna potentially get called for something here. And yeah, there's a slashing penalty coming. That's gonna send the Axe women, I believe, to the power play. It will be a Hurricanes penalty. Or, no, it's actually gonna be Ryan going off here for Acadia. So big development, Holland College to the power play, 41 seconds into this overtime session. Lily Ryan called for slashing here. Holland College to the power play where they've gotten two of their three goals this evening. And it's gonna be four on three here. We're gonna see Rankin in to take the draw. She's got White on her wing. And Culp is unable to control that one at the point. She'll send that one over to Deshane. And brought back in by Jenna White. Jenna White brings it back to set it all up for Rankin. She works her way around the net. And that's back for Deshane. She fires it. And nice glove save by Longley. It looked like it might have been going a little high and wide anyway, but never a bad play there from Longley to glove it and stop the play, give her team a bit of a reset. And speaking of reset, it appears we've got a timeout called here. And the timeout will be charged to, looks like it'll be charged to the Hurricanes here. Indeed it is the Hurricanes called, calling the timeout here. Four minutes left in this first overtime session. And as we're waiting on the timeout here, we'll acknowledge more of our sponsors here, PEI Source for Sports, East Coast Cresting, Boston Pizza, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, DP Murphy Incorporated, ADL, Pepsi, the city of Charlottetown, Domino's Pizza, Holland College, Holland College Canes Camp, Holland Hurricanes Academy, and Hurricanes Physiotherapy. And just to reset the scene for you here, four minutes left in this first overtime session, contested at four on four. All tied up at three here. Hurricanes on the power play still as McMillan sends that one back. Rankin now with it back to Dixon. Dixon will fire that one on net, and Longley's able to see that one through the traffic. Makes the save once again, we'll get another face off to her right. Decent execution here from the Hurricanes early on in this power play. 3.51 left in this first overtime session. And Dixon got caught a little flat footed here. Here's Atkinson on a shorthanded break, but she's cut off there by Claire Rankin who comes out with the puck here. Now Dean with it. Paige Dean brings the cross center ice into Acadia territory. There's Rankin, tries to go back across and Dean can't quite get a handle on that, but Rankin gets it right back. Back to Alexander Deshane here. Deshane will fire that one and that one goes wide. And Rankin will set this one back up. Back to McMillan at the point. Back to Rankin at the top of the circle. Cromwell with a good job to defend. Dean with the shot. Longley with the even better save. Hurricanes applying pressure on the power play here. 3.09 left in this first overtime session. 50 seconds left in this Hurricanes power play. And now White in to take the draw. But Norris wins that one for Acadia. Haley Dimmick will skate this one out. But picked off there by Dixon. She's got it at center ice. Chips it past the defender into Acadia territory. Dixon with the shot. Longley again with the save. Brittany Longley coming up big for Acadia when they need her here in the extra frame. 
And with 2.55 remaining in this first overtime session, faceoff will once again come to the right of the Acadia goaltender. And McMillan wins that draw a little too cleanly as the puck comes out of the Acadia zone. DeShane back to retrieve it. She sends that one up to McMillan. Can't quite get the handle on that. McMillan with it. She'll skate this one into the zone. Jason McMillan with it. Highlight real goal earlier. Just about another one. But DeShane's got it there. She'll just fire it into the corner. And Acadia will fire this one down the ice. As the final few seconds tick away on the Acadia power play, Lily Ryan set to return here. And headman pass for Dean as Ryan comes out. We're back at full strength here. Got to be careful of the change. Ryan rubs out Cormier there on the boards. Acadia has it in the Holland College zone. And there's Switzer with it. Colp able to stop that one. Holland College going back the other way here. Paige Dean, she'll just chip this one in. Go off for a change. Now Cromwell behind the net being pressured there by McDougal. And Acadia gets this one out. Brooke Switzer finding some open ice. Gets around Kolb. And Can there to get it for Holland College. And coming right back the other way is Claire Rankin. She's got a head of speed here. Gets around Cromwell on the outside. And oh my goodness. How did that one not go in? Longley somehow able to find that one on the goal line. And with a minute 31 left in this first overtime session. Face off to her left here. I think there were some deep breaths here in the audience. Some people may have thought the Hurricanes won this one. But again, Longley able to track it, pick it off the goal line. And I appear to have been mistaken. Face off to Longley's right. Scramble draw there. White fires it on goal. Big rebound. Dixon able to get to that puck. She'll shoot that one right back in. Haley Dimmick with it. Being pressured there by Taylor. But Dimmick's got it right back. Chips it past White behind the net. And Legere and Dixon got tied up there. Acadia sends it out. White retrieves it for Holland College. White will send that one back in. And Holland College will change up here as we get to the final minute of this first overtime session. Now Legere with it. She'll send that one forward to Pike. Andrea Pike gets control of it, gets into the Holland College zone. And Pike beats Dixon to that puck. And what a big save there from Menard right at the top of the crease. Legere had gotten a hold of that loose puck and with 44 seconds left in this first overtime session, Legere can't believe it. She just had it right there in front of Menard, just couldn't get it to go. With 44 seconds to go, face off to Menard's left. McMillan and Atkinson, familiar foes in the face-off circle. McMillan gets that one. Can cuts back here. And Can will send that one forward. And Dean will send that one across ice here for McMillan. But Cromwell's there to meet her. Battle of the 14s there. And now Paige Dean brings it into the Acadia zone. She'll fire that one on goal. Nice stop by Longley. And Dean still with the puck here. She'll send that one across the ice. 15 seconds left in this first overtime session. McMillan goes down in the corner. And Acadia sends that one forward. Atkinson with it. And clearing attempt is blocked by her own player. Atkinson will try it again. And that is the end of the first overtime session here, ladies and gentlemen. So for the next five minutes, you'll see things go to three on three. And if we still don't have a winner, we'll go to a shootout. So we'll see how things shake out. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And now you'd have to think interested observers in this contest would be the Cape Breton University Capers. They'll take on these same Acadia University Axe women at 10.20 tomorrow morning. So that'll be a quick turnaround for Acadia in that one. And that game will also be available at AtlanticCollegiateHockey.ca. Now we're going three on three. So we've got a little bit more open ice here as Atkinson and Culp get tied up in the circle. 
That one's poked ahead. Here's Claire Rankin with it. She gets around the defender. Longley with the poke. But Rankin's able to retrieve it. DeShane with an open lane here. She fires it. And Puck's bouncing it. It's in. It's in. Alexandra DeShane fires it from the point. It looks like it goes off Longley's back. And there you have it. Holland College comes all the way back from a 3-1 deficit. And they take this one 4-3. What a huge victory to start off this Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association Championship Tournament. And you can see the Hurricanes are fired up. You see the fans here are fired up. There is an incredible energy in this building right now. What a start to our weekend here in Montague. As the hometown Holland Hurricanes, they come out with the 4-3 victory here. It's a shame we had to see somebody go down to defeat. Acadia does get a point out of this one. But again, it's the Hurricanes who come out in this early in this second overtime session. And it is DeShane credited with the goal here. Sounds like it'll go unassisted. 16 seconds into this second overtime session and it's a 4-3 final for the Hurricanes. Stick around and we'll hear player of the game announcements for each team. And Ali Norris named player of the game here for Acadia. She had the second goal for the Axe women in this one. And she played a pretty consistent and tenacious game throughout. And there you have it. JC McMillan is player of the game for the Holland Hurricanes. Highlight real goal there in the third period to spark the Holland College rally. And ultimately it's a huge huge additional point that the Hurricanes will pick up. They're in the driver's seat now and they get to rest as they watch tomorrow morning's contest between the Acadia University Axe Women and the Cape Breton University Capers who will make their tournament debut tomorrow morning. So for my dear cameraman, Mr. Mason Murray, I'm Jordy Carraher. We will see you tomorrow morning.